for you now. Okay, yes. we can start now. Uh, five o'clock. Then it's a pleasure to uh, introduce Elko Visser. He's been a speaker. Uh, he will talk about safety and completeness of this ambiguation corresponds to termination and confluence of order. Okay, Elko. Sure. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about a, uh, an application of uh, confluence and termination of rewriting systems that I came about uh, sort of by surprise uh, over the holidays. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on a disambiguation of context free grammars, and, and I discovered a correspondence with uh, rewrite systems, as we'll see. So the title of this talk is Safety and Completeness of Disambiguation Corresponds to Termination and Confluence of Reordering. And this is a joint work with Eduardo Amorim, who graduated last year in Delft and is now a postdoc uh, at the Australian U National University, uh, but actually lives in Moscow. And he should be here as well, I hope, or at YouTube. All right, so uh, what do I do? I, uh, I work on a language workbench, so that's a tool for making languages and with various uh, uh, meta languages for defining aspects of languages, such as syntax definition, static semantics, dynamic semantics, term rewriting. And so I've been uh, looking at uh, working on Stratego, a, a transformation language based on rewrite rules, but uh, rewriting strategies. And you might think that uh, that is what I'm going to talk about, but, but that's not, uh, I mean, that's that's a place where you find termination and, uh, and confluence problems in rewriting. Uh, but actually, I'm going to look at this uh, this other part of the spectrum, syntax definition, and we'll see an interesting connection with, uh, with confluence. At, at least, it was a surprise to me. Um, all right, so what, we do, what do we do in syntax definition uh, in, in SDF? Uh, this, this language, we write uh, context-free grammars to define languages using context-free productions. For example, an expression is an expression plus an expression. And we define these uh, grammars to be ambiguous, right? You can see that this uh, this production over here is ambiguous. It can be both, uh, uh, it, it, it is, uh, if you take two additions, it may be left or right associative. And if you combine it with multiplication, well, you see more ambiguities. And rather than rewriting the grammar to be non-ambiguous, non we apply these uh, disambiguation annotations. So we say addition is left associative and multiplication is higher priority than uh, addition. Um, all right, so this language has lots of interesting uh, properties, but, but today I'm interested in this aspect of declarative disambiguation and, and its semantics. Um, so a little history, I've been working on this for, for a while. So my, my PhD thesis was on SDF2 and it contained a, a semantics of disambiguation based on subtree exclusion. And in uh, about 10 years ago, Peter Mosses observed that, uh, well, and I, I sort of knew, but Peter Mosses observed that these rules were unsafe for, for example, the Alcamel expression grammar. Uh, then Ali Afroze worked on this and he, he developed a program transformation that solved some of these problems but then it's proved is correct. And, and recently we, uh, Eduardo and I have been working on defining a proper semantics, a direct semantics of these disambiguation rules. Um, and we've written a, a top last paper about that and submitted that and the readers were interested, but we weren't, I mean, the, the question was, is this, is this correct? And can you, can you prove this? And the approach we had wasn't quite satisfactory and so over the holidays, I've been uh, working on a new approach for, um, for proving the safety and completeness of this uh, semantics. And that's what, uh, what I'll talk about today. All right, so what's the problem? We have these uh, expressions, we, uh, they're ambiguous, so there are mul multiple possible readings. Uh, but typically we associate a particular reading with such an expression based on uh, well, uh, based on what? Well, on uh, associativity and priority, right? So in the top diagram here, we see that uh, A plus B times C can be read in two ways, right? Either it's A plus B times C or A plus B times C. Um, and uh, similarly for, um, uh, for, for this one, uh, A minus B plus C. And uh, we typically disambiguate such expressions by 
applying either priority. Right? We say here that multiplication is higher priority than addition. And here we say that um, addition and uh, subtraction are mutually left associative. Um, all right, and, uh, but it, it gets a bit more complicated if you consider an expression like this, uh, where we have a, a lambda expression. And then the question is, should we read such an expression as this expression or this expression or this expression? And it's, uh, so if we take this one, we say that the lambda has higher priority uh, and, and this one as well, uh, but this is actually the preferred reading and it's not so clear how to assign the priority in a, in a correct way. I'll come back to that. Okay, so what I'm talking about today is uh, what is the semantics of such uh, associativity and priority rules? Um, and given that semantics, then if we have a set of rules for a grammar, is uh, the set of disambiguation rules safe? And is it complete? And, we'll, and I'll say what that means. And, and then the question is, how, how do you actually prove that? Uh, so what I'm not going to talk about is what kind of ambiguities does do associativity and priority rules solve? There are more ambiguities in context-free grammars that we do not address with this approach. And I'm also not talking about what is an effective implementation strategy for disambiguation rules. Uh, you could also ask why this is not a solved problem. Parsing is old and uh, uh, well, Ambiguity of context-free grammars is undecidable. Um, so maybe uh, people think, well, this is undecidable in general, so why bother? Um, and also there are numerous implementations of associativity and priority, but they depend on particular implementations and don't provide a general, um, a general semantics that you can prove things about. All right. Um, Okay, so let's look at this problem again. So what we have here is ambiguity. So a, an ambiguous sentence is a sentence that has multiple possible parse trees in a context-free grammar. For example, this sentence A plus B uh, times C minus D has five possible parse trees, right? It has A plus B times C minus D and other readings. And I've used here trees with constructors in the roots to get a clearer picture of uh, how things move around, right? You see that uh, uh, the addition uh, goes from, uh, is either on the top or it can be on the bottom. And so these, these trees shift around quite a bit. So how do you go about disambiguating such sentences? Well, in, uh, in my thesis, I defined uh, uh, a semantics for associativity and priority rules by means of subtree exclusion. Um, and basically that says if you have a priority rule or an associativity rule that defines a, a tree pattern. And if a tree matches, the, I mean, if a subtree matches one of those patterns, then that tree is forbidden. So for example, if uh, we have this production uh, A dot C1 is greater than A dot C2, then this tree shouldn't occur. Right, a, a uh, subtree with a constructor with lower priority should not occur as a child of a, a tree with higher priority. For example, if we have multiplication as higher priority than addition, then uh, addition may not occur as a child of a multiplication. And not on the left side and not on the right side. Right? This, this schema here says it cannot occur anywhere as a child. Similarly, for left associativity, uh, when uh, two productions are mutually left associative, then we cannot have this right associative pattern. For example, addition is left associative with itself, and so we cannot have a, the right associa association of, of two additions. Okay, uh, well, if we look at the example, then uh, indeed this, this works. We see that uh, by uh, the, uh, the priority rules that we saw before, uh, we get a bunch of uh, uh, subtree exclusion patterns and they exclude all but one uh, of the trees for the sentence. So this, by applying these subtree exclusion rules, we disambiguate the sentence and we get the one 
tree that we uh, expect. Multiplication has highest pre uh, precedence and addition and minus are mutually left associative. Okay. Um, oops. So, um, but now if you extend this to uh, prefix operators, uh, then, well, this still works. For example, we have a, a, a minus operator that has higher priority than addition and multiplication. Uh, then we get, we get these two rules and therefore a tree uh, like this or a, um, uh, right, a tree like this is forbidden. A tree like this is forbidden because multiplication is higher priority than addition. And therefore, uh, this is the only valid sentence for this, uh, uh, the only valid tree for this sentence. However, this approach is unsafe for um, low priority prefix operators like that lambda that we saw before. Um, so the, uh, if you look at the, if we have addition as higher priority than lambda. So typically what we want in a lambda is that it, uh, it extends as far as to the right as possible. So it's, uh, if we have a lambda of an addition, then the, the lambda or the addition is under the lambda and we don't have an addition of, uh, of, a, uh, of a lambda with something. Uh, so therefore we want lambda to have low priority and uh, we would get these two rules, uh, right? So lambda cannot occur on the left of an addition and nor can it occur on the right of an addition. But now we get that uh, all these three uh, trees for the sentence uh, a plus lambda x, b plus c are forbidden because they all of them match uh, one of these patterns. Um, okay, so this is the unsafety problem that, that Peter Moss has uh, observed. And, um, uh, and, and so what we did is a, uh, come up with a uh, solution, a safe subtree exclusion rules uh, that we uh, use in SGF3. And uh, the rules are as follows. So um, only um, so we have associativity rules only on, on binary uh, operations, so uh, productions that are both left and right recursive. And for priority, we have a priority rule that only applies if uh, a, a low priority uh, production is on the left of a uh, higher priority production and it is right associative or when it's on the right of a uh, uh, higher priority production uh, and it is left associative. And well, these rules are, are, are safe. And now we get, uh, so what we uh, now get is that we don't forbid this pattern because there's only the sentence A plus lambda uh, X plus B uh, dot B only has one, one parse, right? You cannot, uh, there's no way you can, um, put the lambda on top of the uh, addition here. So we're not forbidding this pattern anymore, only this pattern, and that, that makes the, the definition safe. However, this introduces another problem. Uh, it's now incomplete. Uh, so there are now some uh, trees that don't get disambiguated. For example, if we have the sentence A plus lambda X, B plus C, uh, then, uh, well, we get this tree, which is the, the, the preferred one, but we also get, uh, uh, this tree where the uh, addition that we would like to be under the lambda is uh, is on top. And to prevent that, uh, we, we, we cannot use these shallow patterns anymore, but rather we need deep, uh, we need deep patterns. So we need an infinite amount of, uh, of patterns and we've formalized that in the notion of deep priority conflicts. And that uh, forbids a pattern like this and we get the, uh, right, at the and there might be any number of, uh, of productions. Uh, uh, so the, the lambda might occur on the right most edge of this, uh, of this left child of an addition. And that conflict will be detected with our new semantics. All right, so, so that leads to a semantics of uh, associativity and priority that works for um, 
infix operators, pref prefix operators, uh, and postfix operators, both with prefix and, if, and, and uh, postfix operators with high and low priority. And, uh, and we've integrated this in an implementation of SGF3 in a, in a parser generator, and it has been available in our language workbench for a while. Uh, now the question is, um, uh, and it works for things like uh, lead bindings in OCaml and, and lambdas and all these kinds of functional constructs that have a low priority. Um, now the question is, is this correct? And so, so of course, we, we, uh, we have the, uh, the, the intuition that this is correct, and, um, but, but how do you actually uh, prove this? Uh, so first, the question is, is a set of disaggregation rules safe for a particular grammar and is it complete? Um, and then how do you prove that? And, uh, all right, so, so when is it, uh, what is safety and completeness? Uh, so safety means that, um, uh, that all the sentences in the underlying context-free grammar are, do have a parse tree in the disambiguated grammar. And completeness means that each sentence had, has at most one parse tree in the, uh, in the disambiguated grammar. So for each sentence, you get exactly one, uh, one parse tree. So for example, the, the rules that we saw before, uh, multiplication has higher priority than, uh, than, than minus, addition is left associative with minus, and, and multiplication has higher priority than addition, is uh, safe and complete for this, uh, for this fragment, right? which, which results in this, uh, this sentence being uh, having exactly one, one parse tree. Um, Okay, and so when do we get unsafety? Well, when we have too many um, disambiguation rules. For example, if you would add uh, to that grammar a rule that says that not only is addition left associative with minus, but it's also right associative, then we would forbid uh, this tree and we would have no trees left. Uh, similarly, uh, incompleteness means that we, are, we miss rules. Uh, if, we don't have to, if, if we don't have sufficiently many rules, then we will uh, have more than one tree per sentence. Okay, um, so that's that's semantics and, and criteria for safety and completeness. Now, how do we prove that if we have a grammar with sufficiently many rules, we always have a um, disambiguated uh, grammar? So what we want is a notion of uh, trees with uh, uh, without conflicts. So that's the subtree of trees uh, induced by a grammar that has no, uh, that has no, that have no conflicts. And then for safety, if there is a sentence in the grammar, uh, then uh, there should be a tree in that uh, tree under subtree exclusion and that set of trees under subtree exclusion uh, that doesn't, that doesn't have a conflict, right? And that, that has a, the, the yield of the tree should be the, the sentence. And for completeness, there should uh, there, there should be at most be one such tree. Uh, so the essence, uh, so the of the proof is if uh, to prove safety, uh, if some tree has a conflict, then there's another tree that doesn't have a conflict. And for completeness, uh, you want to argue if a tree doesn't have a conflict, then there should not be another tree for that same sentence that has a conflict. And uh, so the problem is that subtree exclusion applies to a single tree. You say, well, this tree is wrong. Uh, how do we, I know if this tree is wrong that there's another tree that, that, that is right, that doesn't have a conflict. And uh, well, it has taken me a long time to, uh, to find the, to see the light. Uh, and once you see it, it's, it's, it's sort of obvious, but it's, uh, well, it's interesting uh, how we didn't see it before. And right, and also co-authors and reviewers and other readers of that paper didn't uh, actually uh, see it. So what's the insight? Uh, well, trees, ambiguous, trees for an ambiguity, for an ambiguous sentence are related by reordering. You can rewrite these trees into each other uh, and they can all be rewritten into each other. And, and basically the, uh, the, uh, the rewrite rules are, are simple, right? They're, they're reassociation rules. I'm only looking at, at infix rules here. But if we have two uh, rules that are left associative, you can make them right associative or the other way around. That's, that's it, that's, that's reorderings in, um, 
in uh, infix grammars. And, and so we have a theorem that says all, if we have an ambiguous, if we have a sentence in a uh, grammar with infix expressions, then all the trees for that sentence are related by reorderings. They can be rewritten into each other. And actually this becomes, a, uh, becomes more complicated if you go beyond infix grammars, if you add uh, prefix and postfix operators and, and mix, mix, mix fix, etc. But we'll abstract for, from that for, for this talk. Um, all right, so trees are related by reorderings. Uh, then we turn, we order this, so right, I mean, this, this, uh, this rewrite system is unordered and it is non-terminating. We can go any, any direction. Uh, by using these subtree exclusion rules, we can order this uh, rewrite system so that we only rewrite a tree if it, if the left signs, if, it, if a term matches a, a conflict pattern, right? So if a tree matches a, a left associative conflict pattern, then we rewrite it in the corresponding right associative um, uh, pattern and the other way around. And now uh, the, uh, the insight is that, the, that the, there's a correspondence with, uh, with safety and completeness of this integration, which is that uh, if the rewrite system is uh, is safe, it is terminating, or vice versa. If it's if it's non terminating, the disintegration relation is is unsafe, right? If we have too many rules, then this uh, rewrite system becomes uh, becomes non terminating. We can uh, and uh, vice versa, and 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 similarly, if uh, the rewrite system is uh, is non confluent then uh, that corresponds to incompleteness of the rewrite system. We have multiple possible uh, normal, form, normal forms and we would like to get a unique normal form that is the unique result of this immigration. So safety and completeness is termination and confluence of that reordering rewrite system. And not for this particular rewrite system, but for any uh, uh, rewrite system that we derive from a set of um, um, the disambiguation rules. So to prove this, uh, what we need to do is uh, so, and and what we what I would like to do is to prove this in general for any uh, expression grammar. Prove that if the disambiguation relation is safe, then uh, the rewrite system is terminating, and if the this immigration uh, system is complete, then the uh, rewrite system, the reordering rewrite system is, uh, is confluent. And so for, uh, we've proven that uh, for uh, termination, that means, well, finding a, uh, arguing that if you have a safe disintegration relation, then you have a reduction order on this uh, DI rewrite system. And roughly this, co this corresponds to arguing that the, the number of conflicts reduces, but, but interestingly, it doesn't reduce uh, uh, directly. So it may uh, have uh, uh, intermediate stages where conflicts are uh, actually increase. Um, so that required a, a somewhat more sophisticated reduction order. And then confluence is, uh, um, well, that, that's a matter of finding, uh, of proving that the, the relation is uh, locally confluent. And, uh, and that meant, well, this, this DI system for infix expression grammars has two rules and five critical pairs. And, uh, and what is interesting is that those rules are conditional rewrite rules. Uh, and, um, Right, and, and then if you extend this to uh, prefix and postfix operators, I first tried to do this by hand, but then find out that if you want to extend this to prefix and postfix operators, it becomes complicated. Then we have eight rules, which amount to 28 critical pairs and 36 cases. And so I ended up implementing, uh, uh, finding and rewriting the critical pairs in, uh, in the Stigo uh, transformation language. And it looks like this. So you define uh, rewrite rules. In this, in this case, the so conditional rewrite rules for um, for for parse trees uh, that are conditional on on uh, patterns. So here we say, well, this is a subtree exclusion pattern. 
if a term matches this, uh, this pattern, then we rewrite it to this one. And this one is the, the uh, right to left associative one. And then uh, what the tool does, it, it, uh, it looks at those rules, finds the critical pairs, and then figures out what the derived relations are. So these um, conflict patterns correspond to priority and associativity rules. And we have to consider uh, all the combinations that are implied by these subtree exclusion patterns and then figure out what the derived relations are. For example, if we, uh, and, and, and here it became clear that, for example, transitivity of priority is key to uh, proving this correct. Otherwise, uh, this wouldn't work out. So for example, if, if uh, C1 and C2, uh, uh, if we have this, this relation, then we, uh, and, and we have this relation, then, um, well, it turns out that in this case, all the cases imply that we have C1 should have higher priority than C2, C3. And then we can use that uh, implied relation in rewriting the critical pair. Right? So here we start with uh, the term that we, with the critical pair that we got from the two rules. We rewrite it in, uh, starting with the, the rule that they derive from. And then we can use uh, this, uh, this condition in order to, uh, to finish the, uh, the diagram. Um, and um, yes, okay. Um, so what have we done? We have uh, defined a semantics of associative and associativity and priority. Uh, determine the conditions when such rules are safe and complete. And then uh, devised a, a mechanism for proving that a method is, uh, is uh, correct in general by uh, the correspondence of this evaluation, which uh, with uh, termination and, and confluence of the, the ordering rewrite system. Uh, let me uh, go to questions. If there are any. Okay. Thank you very much for the nice talk, Elko. Then we are open now for questions. Someone has a question. Oh, no, I can, I, I can just. Okay, no, uh, what I think is interesting is that you mentioned that this work is related with a, a bigger project, no? I think, I don't know whether that was clear because it's mm -hmm. part of a topless paper, no? Uh, that's right, yeah. So we're, uh, we're working on, um, on defining this uh, semantics of associativity and priority. Um, uh, so we have written a, a paper about that, but the, the the proof approach we, we took previously was not so uh, was not uh, satisfactory um, either. I mean, I was I wasn't happy with it either. And so basically, there were too many cases, and, and I discovered now why that was the case. I mean, the uh, in the case of uh, already just infix expression grammars, you have these uh, five critical pairs that you have to consider, and then in the case of infix and prefix operators, then you have to consider uh, 36 cases in total. And we, when we were trying to do that by hand, basically that, uh, that was too many. So we needed a, an automated approach and it was interesting to detect this correspondence to, uh, to term rewriting. Okay, thank you very much then. Uh, have, oh no, I, we have to move to the, <laughs> to the last uh, talk sure. by Fernando Reyes. Thank you again for the nice talk. Elko. Sure. And Bye. then